platform like this is an amazing force multiplier. It does bring a lot of benefits to the Coast Guard and it helps in many mission sets. I'm Dr. Andrew Nikolai. I work at the Coast Guard Research and Development Center and essentially am the unmanned aircraft system test director for the RDC and Coast Guard. Uh, the Marine Corps contacted us and they were in a process of disposing their unmanned aircraft system, which were WASP-3s, as they were transitioning to a more capable all-environment WASP-4 system. They contacted the Coast Guard and asked us if we want to be part of a technology transfer, and the Coast Guard said, yeah, we absolutely recognize that WASP-3s are not marinized, but they would be a great capability demonstration platform to take out to the fleet. Uh, Sector Miami reached out to us and said, hey, we have a need. We really need to put eyes in the sky for our cutter crews, our FRCs, and we know you have a potential technology solution at the RDC to, to test. And so it was a perfect marriage to say, hey, we've got these hand launch water recovered systems. Um, let us try it on a non-flight deck equipped cutter. FRC is a great platform for it, plenty of space, and so that's how we made the decision to go ahead and try that here. Once we received our clearances, and what we did was we took our equipment on board the FRC, and the first day we tested our equipment and figured out how to do a temporary installation, where we'd like to fly it from, how we'd get the antennas um, so that they weren't gonna have any interference with the electromagnetic signals. First day, fly it off the FRC and do water recovery. Uh, second day, see if we could put a remote video terminal or a repeater downlink signal on the OTH while we flew off the FRC. And then the third day, try to fly it off the OTH. Uh, all of these demonstrations of that capability really help the small cutter community have sort of a force multiplier effect because you can not only fly it from the FRC itself, but you can extend the range, give it to the OTH, and if they were sent out for a boarding party, say, um, they'd have an ability to, to launch and recover from onboard the OTH. And that's kind of what we wanted to prove. We wanted to look at each step in the evolution, um, and we were successful in all three steps, which enabled us to kind of keep progressing down the path. From the time you decide you want to launch this thing, you can build it, do the pre-flight checklist and launch it, get it airborne within minutes of, of the call. The entire reason to have an unmanned aircraft system is to get the information that it provides you. It's, it's essentially flying eyes in the sky and the WASP-3 has a fixed uh, electro-optical or infrared payload system, but there are better capabilities out there that are more suited for what the Coast Guard needs and that's what we need to pursue. Uh, this demonstration was extremely successful for the Coast Guard at large, for the Research and Development Center, for Sector Miami. Um, the reason it's successful, first and foremost, is that we are building the Coast Guard's unmanned aircraft system resume. And anything we can do to positively shine a light on what, these, what this technology can bring to Coast Guard mission sets is worthwhile doing and is puts us that much closer to someday getting an actual program of record and acquisition in an unmanned aircraft system that we can get the guys in the fleet. Uh, we know the WASP-3 is not the solution for uh, the FRC or for other non-flight deck equipped cutters, but we're starting to build the requirements um, that will help lead us to what the ultimate solution is. So very successful mission. Everyone top to bottom is very pleased at the outcome, so we're happy.